I was born in Guatemala and I came to this country when I was in elementary school. I actually took a couple of trips back and forth to Guatemala and every time I went I was taken aback by the incredible uh, abuse and the unspeakable brutality that was happening to union organizers, that uh, the indigenous people, the poor, um, students, uh, any reformers. And, and that stayed with me until 1987 when I got a job at BART and it was the first union job I had. And there I met a lot of people who talked about these things. And I realized that this was a vehicle not just to improve my wages and my working conditions, but to have, you know, a, a social impact. Roxanne is a great unionist because uh, she has tremendous vision. It is also her compassion that really drives the force for her being a great leader. She brings out the best in whoever it is that she's helping. She is certainly one of the leaders in my lifetime of work in the union for whom I have the greatest regard and the greatest respect and the greatest admiration. Ten to One is made up of working people and staff leaders. She's very willing to listen and, and, and try to evaluate people have to say. Not just part of the community, but working to change and transform the community. She really, I think, gets that if she's going to lead people, um, she has to uh, connect with them. She is committed to lifting up communities of color. Black Lives Matter movement shows us that there are incredible racial prejudices. And they exist institutionalized, structural, and personal. And uh, they're challenging that. And this is a time when 10 to 1 has stepped up and joined. Well, first off, Roxanne is a very humble person. She's always there, a listening ear, always willing to step back and allow you to step forward. Uh, one of the things that I love about Roxanne's leadership style is that when it's necessary for her to be up front, she has no problem taking the lead and being up front but she doesn't like the limelight. She's not someone that wants to seek the camera or seek the, you know, to be in front of the crowd. She really likes to bring other people up and share that responsibility with other people. She actually took that interest in me as she seen something in me that I didn't see. The Unionist of the Year Award is obviously an incredible honor. She's really open to ideas. It personifies the organization of which I represent. She never puts herself first. Not only am I honored for the recognition of SEIU 10 to 1. She's always very compassionate with the members of the union. But it also gives me an opportunity to talk about SEIU 10 to 1 and the cadre of leaders, both staff leaders and member leaders that, that make that up. People really appreciate the fact that she's always out there, again, whether it's a meeting, whether it's a picket line, uh, wherever the fight is at. Roxanne expects and hopes for and believes in the very best in people. We are so embedded within the community in terms of we serve the community and we advocate with the community. She also is very witty and she has a wonderful sense of humor. Now you can read me. <laughs> <laughs> she brings people in. There's a lot out there that both challenge us and also inspire us and the answers have to be comprehensive. Uh, we can't just win at the bargaining table and not win in the community. We cannot just win on a social level and not win for workers' rights. So um, I'm very encouraged by what I've seen over the last year of how people are coming together, whether it's environmentalists or social advocates um, and, or labor leaders, and we're all coming together to figure out what are the next steps. And I think we're going to, I think we're going to make it happen. And, and you know what, there was really no choice. We have to make it happen. So Roxanne, congratulations. I'm so proud of you. Couldn't happen to a better person. You've made a great contribution to working people. You're absolutely deserving of this award.